welcome Nancy Lee. Was it Lie? Lee, you got got it right. L I, Nancy Lee. Welcome Nancy Lee to Extraordinary Visionaries. So tell me, Nancy, how are you an ordinary visionary? Sure. So uh, I believe you define ordinary visionary as someone who has the willingness to turn an idea into reality by giving their time, their care, attention, and then going sure. back to a drawing board and not being perfectionist and seeing what happens. So I, I, I've like multiple times in my life that I've done that. So maybe I'll take a step back and start talking where um, I was actually contributing to someone's vision. So there's two cases when I was younger where um, as part of the National Association of Asian American Professionals, and they wanted to start up a women's group. And during that time, it was also when Sheryl Sandberg, remember the COO of Facebook, published a book called Lean In, and I was very gung-ho yeah. about exploring um, being a woman in the workplace. So I actually rose up and say, I'm happy to start that uh, branch within the chapter. And so I, uh, for three years, I was the director of this women's group in the Asian American Professional, and we did a lot of events to kind of hold that space for um, Asian American women to explore what does it mean to be in a workplace? What does it mean to be a leader or a follower? And also adding on top of the, the cultural aspect on top of the gender aspect. So that was fun, but it wasn't my vision. It's just that it was something that coincided with what I was ex passionate about exploring. Um, the second time was after I met a person who, um, she was uh, a mindfulness and meditation teacher. Her name is Zui Kwok. And she, for her um, going to different colleges, talking to, to students about meditation, she met a lot of first-gen low-income college students. And they, she realized the gap still exists between those who have parents have gone to colleges before and those who haven't. Just even how to act in college, know that you could have access to resources and then, which then helps them get a better job. So she decided to start a nonprofit uh, called the Collective Success Network. And I was one of the co-founder and I was a, co-executive director for three and a half years. So um, that, in a sense, was also wow. really amazing. Yeah, to pull together not only students in the Philadelphia colleges from Temple to UPenn to Drexel, but also professionals to mentor them. But again, it was someone else's vision first. And I think there's a lot of richness when I added my parts and other people, not just me. A lot of people coming together, we can really make something magical. But for the first time, actually, I'm working on something that's really my vision. And when I say my, I don't, I'm air quoting it because I don't think anything is truly ours, right? Um, so my story is that I was at a meditation retreat during the first. <laughs> Sorry, there's a little lag. Yeah. So I was at a meditation, 10 day silent meditation retreat a few years ago. And during the sixth day, and, and keep in mind, this retreat does not give you books. You're not allowed to use books, devices not even journaling. Of course you can always cheat, but I, you know, I didn't. So on my sixth day, I had all these like children's stories come to me. And I was like, what is this? And of course they're also based on my life. And I, I also wanted to leave that meditation center because I was like, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna remember them. And I was like, and I told those stories. I was like, you know what? I wanna finish my meditation retreat. If it's meant to be mine, come back to me in 10 days. Meaning after I get out for a week and I settle back into real life, come back to me. And they did. So I spent a whole year trying to figure out. So, yeah. so one second. Let me back up just a little bit. So had you ever had thoughts about children's stories before? Or it only came to you the first time during that meditation retreat. Well, I love stories and I love children's stories. So I actually even have children. Okay. But even I don't have children myself. So that is the context. But I never thought yeah. I'm going to write one. I just, I just love stories. And so often I have ideas that kick around in my mind for a long time. And then, you know, then it comes together and I put it into action, you know, whatever it is. Um, but it's interesting. In a, in a, in a, was it mostly a silent retreat, the meditation oh, retreat? It was all silent. Yeah. We're not even supposed to glance at another person or give them signals. Okay. So in so that's the that's an interesting thing to me. So in in that silence, you know, the mind sort of slows down, you just sort of become more aware of yourself. Yeah. And yet somewhere deep down in the recess of your mind, there's these stories that are to, that there to be told. Just like it's almost like a dream, you know. I had an incredible dream last night. I won't get into it. It was just I have wackadoodle dreams. <laughs> but 
but it's sort of this was almost like a waking dream. You're here awake, aware in the meditation, and these visions, these ideas for these stories just come up. Yeah. And you're about to leave because you don't want to lose them, but you say, no, I'll trust they'll come back. So then the the retreat goes how many more days after that? So that was the sixth day. It ends on the 10th day. So four or five days later. And I said, give me 10 days because I wanted like a week to come out and, you know, get back to work and living in the real world where we actually talk to people, you know, and make eye contact. So, yeah, I right. um, started to <laughs> like started to do research. I was like, what does it take to make a children's book? And then, you know, there's the traditional publishing and self-publishing. And I decided I have the resources and means I'm going to self-publish. I learned to write. Um, well, I wrote the story, then I got it edited. I get beta readers, people who read and give you feedback. A friend of a friend is an illustrator. She also has a day job. So I also want to preface this is on top of my day job. My day job was a pharmaceutical business consultant. So, and her day job was architecture, but she also wants to illustrate children's book. And then I also found a printer in China because I want to print my own books instead of uh, using Amazon or other distributors. So that the whole thing from kit to caboodle took a whole year. And I, I, I guess you were going to ask me about it. So I, I'm going to show you this book, the, the cover. It's called Let's Make a Cake. And it's about this little vole. I love it. I think we... Yeah, it's about a vole <laughs> who um, wants to eat something else besides veggies because that's what he eats. So he tries cookies, pies, and fruits. What, 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 is, it? what is the gray? I can't see it. What is, what is the gray thing next to the strawberry? It's a vole. It's kind of like related to a hamster. Oh, really? or a yeah. And so right, he right. goes on this journey to find what he wants and he wants what he wants is cake, but the cake he wants is nowhere to be found. And ultimately he learns to make it with his friend. And at the end, this, the message is this, everything we want and get in life is the icing for we are the cake. So, um, yeah, now I have <laughs> hundreds of these books in my home. <laughs> I don't know what to do with them quite yet. But that is right. my vision was to bring the story to life, and I did. Now, now you got to sell those things, right? Is that your next plan that you're working on? Getting them out there, getting them into bookstores, getting them into Amazon? Oh, so actually, no, it took quite a turn. So um, I was going that, trying to do that route, while on my top of my day job, I found it exhausting because schools have less resources, and um, so. As I was, I actually partnered with an after school program in Philadelphia called ASAP, and they do different um, areas of drama, chess, Scrabble. And I was able to create a workshop that's based on math and science. Because when you think about it, baking, which the bowl does, requires math and science, chemistry. So I make a really fun workshop where kids get to be the ingredients and they role play in it. And then we bake a cake together. It's very interactive. But as I was doing it, I was saying, huh, like my tagline of my company I created is called nourishing. The tagline is nourishing the inner child. But I really believe adults need nourishing. So since um, half a year ago, I got laid off of my job. Uh, I want to start help people nourish their own inner child. Adults nourish their own inner child. Because so let me take a step back. Uh, let me define what inner child is first, because I think that's a very popular phrase now. So when I say inner child, some people think it's the, uh, the really hurt young part that really suffered and you want to rescue and help it. Or it could be the part that had the best time of your life when you were young and you want to relive that part. And for me, it's neither. So for me, the inner child is that if we're truly well taken care of as a really young being, just really well taken care of, nourished, just certain qualities would come up, right? Like kindness, like play, like care, like connection and love, right? Purpose, meaning. And I want to help people have a better self-connection by connecting to that young, that inner child of theirs that was so nourished, that had all these qualities just coming out like an overflowing cup, overflowing cup. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want to do. And by a, a grade five, at a certain time in school, so, so much of by a certain time in school, so many of those, you know, creative childlike impulses get quashed. You have yeah. to have the right answer. You have to follow the rules. You have to do this. You have to do that. You can tell I just love school, right? So not so much. <laughs> no, right? It's like, 
it's hard to be a child in school sometimes. You, there's a right and a wrong or like you're not good enough and you're graded and it's stressful, right? And uh, you think of adults, like it, that trend kind of continues, right? Like you go to get a job, right? Or even a romantic relationship or any relationship. You can feel like comparison, right? Or like, am I, am I doing enough? Am I enough? So um, I want to help people strengthen their own inner connection by connecting to their inner child. And I'm develop these workshops, or I could say I'm a coach where I, I do um, each session. We do exercises to help them connect. And it could be different ways because, you know, some people are more into writing, some are into movement, some are into visualization. So connecting with your younger inner child and just seeing if you have, there are certain qualities that then you want to bring into your own life, right? So let's say when you connect your inner child, you realize I want more play. So then we come up with the next smallest step. The idea is that there's small steps next week. You could explore what play can mean to you as adults and even cultivate it in your life. So that's what I would love to do for adults now. That's my vision. So what's your plan? <laughs> oh, my plan is uh, I'm refining my um, marketing message. I really want to uh, help those who are high achieving professionals who are um, struggling in their professional relationship because I believe this could really help them. Um, updating my website, I want to network and connect to uh, people who maybe have those people in their networks and see if they want to work with me. Um, and I mean, you're also, I know you're a marketing guru. I also would love to hear what you think I should do too because I, I'm just starting out. Uh, because for a long time, I've been in a corporate America. So the entrepreneurship is definitely different. Right. Yeah, well, uh, you really have to find the message that connects with people. And that's that's always a tricky thing, right? Um, it's all about words. It's all about the meaning behind the words. It's all about, you know, what will this really give people? Mm. And uh, so it's tricky, you know. Um, since you have experience in the corporate world, um, you know, there's more money to be made in corporations. But, you know, corporations, they do all kinds of trainings, right? Mm -hmm. All kinds of trainings. Yeah. But most trainings are sort of technical how-to, supervisory skills, management skills, leadership skills, that kind of thing. So you have to, you know, I would talk to a lot of people. You know, don't just create a plan and try it. Talk to a lot of people and see until you until pe you get people to resonate with what you're doing. You know, I do a course that will give you this. This yes. is what how it will help you. Yes. I mean, I, I think everybody in business. Um, well, maybe not everybody, but I think creativity in business. Is really, really important. Oh, and you're tapping into your inner creative creativity that just came to you in a meditation workshop, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's so many ways things can do in business. You also um, wrote in that um, in the material you sent me before the interview about how you were working with a manager who was always yelling all the time and just alienating everybody and, you know. Yeah. That kind of, and uh, apparently he went on to something else, and you were given the job to manage things, and you found really creative ways to get people working as a team. So yeah. that that shows me that you already have those kind of skills uh, as a manager. Thank you. You know, it's a tricky I, I thing because. I do want to clarify. I was not managing the team after people left. A new leader came in. But I approach her to say, uh, we need more roles and responsibility to find and to heal the culture for you to really reach your vision. Yeah, you know, she had this huge vision and our team was pretty broken at that time. Yeah. But I just want to clarify that because I did not. I don't want to take yeah. on that. I love the team. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but awesome. you were the catalyst, right? Yes. Yes. It was something that I yeah. told that manager, um, that leader, um, this is the proudest proudest team, proudest project I've ever done in my whole uh, corporate life. 
my work, whole professional life, this is the proudest thing I've done, which is to help this team go for just cultural transformation. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't know what it's going to be like. Like you said, like being an ordinary visionary means not getting it right the first time and just putting myself and the work out there. And if truly could really help and serve people, I hope it resonates, right? And if I don't even have the right words, maybe other people could lend me their words, right? Tell me what words would resonate with them. Um, and hopefully I can get to use and help people. Yeah. So it takes some time, you know, you've got to, um, you got to talk to as many people as you can. Yeah. Say, I have an idea I want to bring into companies. I want to get your take on it. Mm -hmm. That's how I would start. Yeah. Who do you know in companies? Who do you know that has connections in companies? You know, it's, it's really hard, if not impossible in many ways to like cold call the company saying, I have this wonderful course you might be interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, some people can succeed at that, but pretty hard. Yeah. But, you know, the, I think you really have to go with got with with what got you to where you are now with these ideas, writing the book and creating a course and and working with people, and just keep trusting that ideas will keep coming. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's how you know what I did over the years. It's like an idea came and uh, and then I thought about it a lot, and then I wrote some stuff, and I put it out, and I created course after course after course over the years. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always creating courses and programs and stuff like that. Yeah. And but I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I worked hard to do it, but I, I followed my inspiration and my intuition and my knowledge, and you know, and you know, it's things started to evolve. Yeah. I can't really tell anyone how to do that, but except to trust yourself. And, you know, the thing that I see that stops people so much is, oh, I can't do that. I don't know the right steps. I haven't done before. All the negative voices, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me you really had a breakthrough beyond that, right? Yes, you know? and the voices yes. still exist. I mean, those voices still exist, especially in something um, yes. so so personal. I think for, very personal and very precious to me. But I think it, it's um, it matters to me. Yeah, and I do want to try. And I think finding uh, communities and people who are supportive, and so that I could make those mistakes, so I could learn to ask boldly, so I could try to like figure out different ways. I think is so important because. I can't do it alone, even if I'm a genius. Like, I think I, there's a, a quote that I really love by an actual genius. He said, like, I might be the smartest person in the room, but I'm not smarter than the whole room. It, because even this genius acknowledges <laughs> that he needs, like, everyone brings different gifts and skills and talents, and he's just one head. And while there's a whole room full of people, and when you put all those uh, hearts and minds together, it's just so much more powerful. So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. A part of me feels a bit scared, of course. I mean, do, I'm doing something I haven't really done before. I've been trained very much in science and biology and business and those ways. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And so that's why I'm really um, grateful for this opportunity to even talk to you and share what's going on. And um, yeah, I think thank you for that, uh, your perspective and guidance about what can be done and just keep trying and see what words resonate, really, have people share their words with me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're in an exciting place in, in, in this journey because you're just getting started out. Yes. Um, you know, the very first thing I did in my business I, is I created a time management system. And I created this book and then I started to do workshops on that. And then, but that was not the fi final thing. And then I met people in these workshops and they needed help in their business, but they didn't need help with organizing and time management. They needed help with marketing. So I didn't know a lot about marketing. So over a 10 year period, I read 500 books. <laughs> wow. On marketing. Wow. Okay. So I was just reading all the time, you know, it's just putting the information in there. And then out of that came, okay, well, how can I put that together to do the first thing? And then I started to work with a lot of individuals and then, you know, so things evolve. That's very things cool. Things evolve. Now, That's very cool. 
I, I don't know if you're in a position where you can be self-employed now if you've saved money or you have to have a you have to have a job in a regular company and do this on the side, which yeah. is which is hard, which is a lot of work. It is. You so know? my my next plan is um, since I've been laid off last year, um, is I've been enjoying my time off. I, I, I really do. It's a gift. But um, I think I want, yeah. I want to do now is approach companies uh, to be uh, part of their training, the, to part, be part of their training department, specifically in communication, conflict resolution, and cultural transformation, because I've done that, whether in the corporate world with that team I told you about transforming culture or for the nonprofit. Because if you think about starting nonprofits from scratch, whether it's within the unit, you need all those. And I think communication, uh, I'm actually an avid nonviolent communication uh, pr practitioner. So you're, I actually, can, can I turn to your recent email? You said your e recent email uh, is that opinions and judgments, right? You brought that up. Do you remember, remember your recent email about that? And I, I was like, oh, I would love to tell him that like, um, at least a nonviolent communication, everything we do, we do to meet a need. So when someone's having a judgment or opinion, there's some need there. That it's like being veiled. It's like in disguise as judgment, but they're needing something. I mean, I'm also needing something when I'm judging. So I think for me, that was like such a light bulb when um, with judgments and opinions and also like kind of how do you get to, get to the heart of it? And because when we tell people don't be so judgmental, their being judgmental is fulfilling a need of theirs. And when you tell them not to do something, then how else are they going to meet that need, right? So I, I just think it's fascinating when it comes to that. Yeah, I mean, you know, knowing something, understanding something is one thing. Yes. Conveying that effectively to other people is a whole other game. And it's not easy because people have – people. People say they want to change, but people really don't want to change. They want to kind of stay the same. It's hard to change. But it's scary. It, it is hard to change. But, um, you know, if you put together a program um, that can help people in this area, you know, you don't, you don't just do one program. You do 27 versions of it until you find out find it's perfect you know but yes. the my question would be how can you get in to do your first program maybe it's something that you do for free to to yes. to get some experience under your belt maybe it's um, some associates or friends of yours that you can get together and create a pilot program where they give you a lot of input on how to do it yeah. And, you know, it's it's a stair step kind of thing. It's like it, you kind of slog around for a while and then all of a sudden, you know, it comes yes. together. Yeah. Um, so I've actually beta tested it. I've piloted with uh, individuals. I have. Yeah. So that's what okay. I've been spending the last six months uh, doing. And uh, it has been helpful. People have gotten feedback saying, uh, especially one, they said their relationship. So there are testimonials on my website saying that it really helped her have more discernment and wisdom about her relationships. Uh, one of them also, another person said it helped her like kind of get back on the horse, so to speak. She's now getting back into mindful uh, meditation and eating cleanly, but she actually uh, works in a creative area and she felt she had a, a block almost, like just she wasn't taking care of herself or what things, she's an artist, to help her be creative in that field. So yeah, I've been getting some good feedback uh, and and now I'm ready to do like a, a more group setting than individual, just to see how does that dynamic change with each other. But also I'm happy to do individual, whatever people need, right? Or they're open to, but yes, I agree. I need to do more marketing, do more networking, get myself out there and find, yeah, who it is. <laughs> so I have a lot well, to learn. Well, now, are you certified in non nonviolent communication? I'm not certified. Uh, I'm taking something called a compassion course, which is based on nonviolent communication, and I have the certificate of completion, and I took it for three years. So, okay. yeah. Okay, uh, so you're pretty grounded in that material. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Look, I'm not certified in anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 
you know, I'm completely self-educated, but, you know, pretty thoroughly educated in, in what I what I help people with. That's amazing. And practical things that really work for me. Yeah. So, so you know, you're 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 at a really exciting place right now because uh, I get you're really committed, you're really open, you really have a desire to make a difference, and uh, that's the that's the most important thing you need, as opposed to I want to make a killing and make a lot of money. Well, it's nice to make a lot of money. But unless you're really competent and people buy into your concept and you can produce results for people, mm -hmm. it won't happen. So just find every opportunity you can to, to share it, find opportunities to bring people together yes, and start and, and, and get moving with it. I, yeah. I mean, you've already created a website, right? Yes, I have a website. I'm uh, happy to share it with you or yeah. if you want. I don't have any show notes. Um, I'm also wondering, would it be useful um, if, if I lead you through an uh, exercise to connect with the inner child so if your listeners can also follow along and see if it works for them? Would that be useful? Or if not, that's okay, too. Right right now? Sure. Yeah. I mean, if we have the That'd time, if you're interested, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for letting me do this. Um, so if you want okay. to get a comfortable position, right, you're sitting down. Um, okay. and if you want to close your eyes, so it might be like next five, 10 minutes together. Um, and maybe keep yourself up straight, up, up, uh, straight, but not, not uptight, upright, but not uptight as a friend like to say. And, um, and if you want to keep your eyes closed, Stevie Wonder song, uptight, out of sight. Anyway, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, if you want to close your eyes and keep them closed is great. If not, maybe lower your gaze slightly in front of you. Okay, I'm okay. And then sense into your body. First of all, let's see if there's any sensations coming up. If there's any aches or pain, tightness or lightness. Where is it? And just observe. You don't need to fix anything. It's just noticing. And then let's go to the movie screen of your mind. Notice what thoughts are coming up. Is it fast or slow? Jumpy and erratic? Or is it repeating? Just notice your thoughts. You don't have to fix anything. And then notice your feelings. Maybe you're tired or anxious, open or glad. What feelings are coming up for you? You don't have to do anything about it. You don't have to fix them. Just, just let it be. So now that you're connected with yourself or your body, your thoughts and your feelings, let's now connect with your inner child, little Robert. And when I say the inner child is the part of you that's been really nourished and taken care of when you were young, can you bring him to your mind? What age is he? What kind of clothes is he wearing, if at all? What kind of hair did he have? Maybe long, short. What kind of shoes? Or maybe he's not wearing shoes.
And also what's in his hands. Maybe he's holding a tool or a toy, or maybe his hands is dirty from playing in the dirt. What's in his hands? And as you're with this little Robert, notice how you are feeling. Maybe the feeling is connected to sensations in your body. Notice how you feel when you're with your inner child. And then ask him if he has any requests of you, anything he wants to share or do with you right now. Maybe he wants to play with you. Maybe he wants to sit on a park bench. Maybe he wants to do nothing. That's fine too. But ask and see what comes up. And if it's possible, can you do it with him and spend a little bit of time with him doing what he requested? And notice how he's feeling and the expression on his face. And when you're with him, see what comes up. Like what, what are you inspired by or what qualities come up? Maybe it's warmth or care or fun. Or it could also be sadness. That's fine too. So we're going to start wrapping up this exercise. So you can take some time to thank little Robert for showing up today and ask if he has anything he wants you to know. And when you're ready at your own time, just saying goodbye to little Robert for now. And you can always revisit him. You can open up your eyes and join the shared space again. Are we done? Yes. Like at your own pace yeah. when you're done, open up your eyes. Yeah. That was that fun. Was, that was fun. Really? Oh, what was fun for you? If you're willing to share, what was fun for you? Well, I have, I have a few thoughts. One is, uh, yeah, I, I saw myself way back when, when I was a kid, when we lived in Sardinia. Oh. And, um, the beach and, you know, the things that we did. It was a very exciting time. I guess I was in grade uh, four or five, mm. however old that is. I was ten, uh, 10 years old, younger than 10. <coughs> anyway, 
But I, I know, I noticed that that inner child is still very alive in me. Yeah. You know, really very always exploring, interested in stuff, curious about things, wanting to learn. Um, <laughs> you like that, right? Okay. So that's, that's very, very much there for me. Mm. So, um, so that's, yeah, that's n a nice place to get back to. It's just my, my excited, exploratory, creative inner child that really wants to play, discover things, things like that. Mm. It's, uh, it's very natural for me. So, you know, I can see you doing this in a, in a group. And then everybody shares about this stuff, you mm -hmm. know, and that and that creates a certain synergy. And then you yes. talk about, you know, how can you how can you bring forth your inner child in your day to day work? Yes. And that's not, uh, probably something people don't think about a hell of a lot. It's about we got to get the job done. got to look good. Got to do this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, so in my See, I discovered purely on I didn't like working for people. I didn't like companies. I didn't like the atmosphere. I didn't like the competition. So yeah. I just went off and played by myself and then brought other people in to play with me to discover things. So yes. So uh -huh. you know. Yeah. I, I think you got something here. Thank you. And uh, uh, you know, Nancy, you're you're very um you're kind of new at this, but you're really, you, you get it. You're really connected to this. Yeah, I have to. I, I don't do, I don't ask anyone to do anything in my course that I have not done before. So I think that is not within my integrity because there's a lot of people who yeah. say, do as I say, not as I do. Every exercise and every topic in the course. So the course follows uh, autonomy, play, connection, meaning, Morning and celebration. Those are the topics I cover because I, I do believe, um, you might, so one thing I do want to say about morning, people think we need to celebrate, we need to be positive. Great. But, uh, we are like this cup. And if our cup is filled with stuff from society and, and parents and culture, you want to put more beautiful things in it, but it's already full. So morning pours things out so it can make space for the beauty we want in our life. But, um, at the inner child exercise, all these exercises for all exploring autonomy and connection and play, something I have done. I would never ask anyone to do something I haven't done because I don't think it's uh, within integrity. And also I only bring things that really work yeah. for me. And I'm not saying you're exactly like me, but um, if it resonates, that's what I really want to do is um, I have to have a very good connection with my little Nancy or else this is not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like this is not like a facade. Um, and I hope people can have that because it, I'm not saying it like, I don't feel sad or I don't feel lonely or whatever, or angry sometimes. Absolutely. I'm still human, but I think it's important to them. Like it, it keeps me grounded. It keeps me more centered um, along with a lot, a lot of other things I do like meditation and stuff. But yeah, this is a way for me. And I hope uh, people could also find it within themselves. Right? Yeah. Well, sounds good. Sounds exciting. Thank you. Thank, thank you, know, you for you. There's, there's no fixed right answers. You know, you have to discover for yourself and see what works mm -hmm. and uh, see if people respond to it. Yes. But people definitely need, you know, deeper work on things like that. Tapping into their essential selves, you know, their 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 inner child is another way of talking about your essential self you know yeah yes. you know the the thing that i'm trying to promote is people being um more aware more creative uh, more courageous any any of the expansive qualities you know how can we tap into that as opposed to i can't do that that's hard i don't want to <laughs> all that kind of crap <laughs> uh, so this this is something that we can tap into for our whole lives. Yes, you know, some people work a whole life and then they retired and they go, "Well, I have no meaning in my life anymore because I don't have my work." When I retired, I started working harder at doing other things. Uh, I do sleep later now. 
Okay. That helps. But, you know, writing and, and writing and doing these interviews and stuff like that, just to continue to connect with people and support people in what's really, you know, what's the ordinary visionary in them and how can that, how can that come out? Exactly. Otherwise we're living half a life, you know? Yes. We're living the life that we're told we're less- to instead of the life that we want right. to, right? And I think, um, right. Well, I yeah. gave up on that a long time ago, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, you have you a know, lot of courage. Buying think- this house was, uh, I don't know if it's courage. It's just, uh, you know, I trust myself to know what I want and what I'm excited about. And then, you know, I, I put the work in to, to formulate things, to develop things, to uh, put together a course or, or, or whatever. Um, anyway. Nancy, it was really a delight to uh, talk with you today, and I'm really excited to see what happens. So keep me posted, okay? I will, and thank you, Robert. Um, just grateful for this opportunity to meet you in person. I've been subscribed to your emails for a bit, and um, yeah, thank you for all support and being willing to try this out with me today. And uh, hopefully, um, whoever listens to this will, can also try this exercise, right? And uh, hopefully, I can help yeah. them. So thank you for this opportunity. I, I think really I'm going to have a good day. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nancy. Okay.